everyone i hope all of you are doing good and today i am here with tissues class 9th science so we are going to complete this entire lesson on tissues in seven videos and i would request you to watch all the seven videos if you want to get a crystal clear understanding of tissues the link to the playlist is given in the description section Now, what exactly are we going to learn in tissues? Now, this is going to be our first video, which is an introduction video to understand what exactly is a tissue. Let's start from cells. We all learned about cells, the building blocks of our body, isn't it? Now, if we talk about a unicellular organism like amoeba, which is made up of one cell, what happens there? That single cell performs all the functions needed for amoeba to survive. So whether it is getting food, whether it is digestion or anything, everything is performed but by that one cell. Now, if I talk about a multicellular organism which is made up of many cells, what happens there? Who is going to perform what task? That becomes a question. Now, in multicellular organism, what is done is division of labor. Now, what's that? Let's take this example. Let us suppose that there are 100 students in your class and you want to organize a function on the upcoming Independence Day. Okay, great. Now, for that function to happen, you, you need to do a lot of different tasks. For example, somebody needs to take care of the announcement, somebody needs to take care of the seating arrangement, somebody has to take care of uh, decorating the stage, somebody has to sing a song, some has to perform a dance and so on. Now, do you think it is a wise idea that all the hundred students perform the dance? Again, all the hundred students make the seating arrangements, all the hundred students make the announcement? No, that's not a great idea, right? So what do we do? we apply division of labor as in we divide tasks to different people so for example if we have 100 students in the class we say okay the five of you are going to sing a song we say that the 10 of you are going to perform a dance the 10 of you are going to take care of the stage decoration now what happens now these 10 people so now we have divided those 100 students into groups and each of these groups will perform a specific function that means let's say if there are 10 students who are going to perform a dance so these 10 students will completely focus on rehearsal practicing the dance and all of that just for that dance performance and this is exactly what happens in case of a multicellular organism. A group of cells which are similar in structure and they perform a similar function. They together work and this type of group of cells is what we call as a tissue. So as I just explained, a group of cells that are similar in structure and or work together to achieve a specific function. So this is very important because the group of cells, they may be similar in structure. They might not be similar in structure. They have to work together to perform a specific function, right? So this group of cells are known as tissues. Now, when we think of tissue, so everything, every living organism is made up of cells, right? So every living organism also consists of tissues, right? So right now we are talking about the multicellular organisms because in case of unicellular organism, you just have one cell. So that one cell can perform everything, right? So there is no concept of tissues in case of a multi, uh, in case of a unicellular organism. So whatever we are going to talk about is all multicellular organism. So here we have shown you two pictures of a plant tissue and a lung tissue. So that is an animal tissue. So I am sure that the picture must be looking weird to you. But this is how actually a tissue looks like when you see it under a microscope. So here if you see this, this is a plant tissue. It is made up of so many cells. 
and those cells have grouped together to form this tissue. Similarly, this is a lung tissue. So this is a kind of animal tissue. We generally see a lung inside an animal body, right? So the lung is made up of, again, everything is made up of cell, right? So inside the lung, the cells have come together. They have grouped themselves together to specialize in a particular function. And that is how they have formed the lung tissue. So this is how a lung tissue looks like when it is seen under a microscope. So with this, let us look at the level of organization. What do I mean by level of organization? That means level of organization. That means when an organism is formed, so there are different levels of formation of an organism. So let us look at those different levels so that we can actually locate where tissue lies. So when we talk of the level, the very first level of formation of an organism is the cell which is a basic building block of living organism, right? The next level is tissue. That means when cells group together to perform a specific function, they are tissues. Now, what happens to the tissues? The tissues again group together to form something known as organ. So here, if you look at um, diagram or if you take this example for example in the first picture you see just one cell now many such small cells will join together and they will form something like this tissue now these tissue this is a lung tissue the picture which I have shown here now these lung tissues they actually join together they will group together and they will form the organ organ means they will form this lung so the lung is actually made up of the lung tissue right now, these organs will finally join together to form an organ system. For example, the lungs. So, the lung is just one organ. Now, similarly, you will have many different organs and those organs will join together to form an organ system. For example, here I have shown you the respiratory system. So, here if you see, this is the respiratory system. What is respiratory system? The system which actually helps us in respiration. Respiration means breathing. So we take in oxygen and we give out the carbon dioxide. I hope all of you know how important is that. If we stop breathing, we will stop leaving, right? So that means the lungs then together form the lung, not only the lungs, many such organs like lungs, they come together and they form an organ system. For example, if you look at the digestive system, the digestive system is an organ system and it has many different organs. For example, it has the stomach, it has the small intestine, it has the large intestine, right? So similarly, if you look at some other system, for example, if you look at the ingestion system, so the system which helps us in intake of food, you have the mouth, you have the teeth, right? So you have different organs which actually make up the organ system and these organ systems together make up the organism. For example, the digestive system, the excretory system, the respiratory system. So all these systems together make up the human body. So not only the human beings, every living organism, whether it is a cat, a dog, an elephant, a monkey, everybody has different organ systems inside their body. Those organ systems are actually made up of different organs like kidney, lung, heart, right? And those organs are made up of tissues and those tissues are made up of cells. So this is the level of organization of any living organism. So in this lesson, we will be concentrating on tissues right so this is our focus in this lesson so now the next question is are all tissues similar that means whether it is um, an animal tissue or it is a plant tissue so are they all look similar do they all look so exactly similar so let us have a look at that well not exactly now let us try to remember the plant cell and the animal cell, which we have discussed in our previous lesson, right? So we have had a good in-depth discussion on plant cell and animal cell. So do you think that the plant cell and the animal cell looked exactly similar? Let us have quickly, let us look at these two pictures of plant cell and animal cell so that you can remember or you can recall whatever you have studied in the previous lesson. 
So there are very differences between a plant cell and an animal cell. For example, in a plant cell you had vacuoles, right, which had an important role to play. They give rigidity to the plant cell. Whereas in case of animal cells, vacuoles did not have much role to play, correct? Similarly, in case of a plant cell, you had an additional cell wall which was missing in case of an animal cell. So there were many such differences between a plant cell and an animal cell. Correct? So that means the plant cell and the animal cell were not exactly similar. Now these cells only again group together to form tissues. So now do you think that the plant tissues and the animal tissues would be exactly similar? No. Because the component which is making up the plant tissue and the animal tissue, they are not similar. So therefore, the plant tissues and the animal tissues will also not be similar. And also, another thing is that tissues are assigned some specific functions. So now the functions are also in accordance with the lifestyle and food habit of that organism, whether it is plant or animal. Correct? As I mentioned before that the cells, the one thing is that since the plant cell and the animal cell were not exactly similar, therefore the plant tissues and the animal tissues are also not exactly similar. The second thing is that since plants and animals both are two different kinds of organisms which have different kind of lifestyle, different kind of food habit, so therefore the kind of function they want the tissue to perform that is also different. Correct? So that is why the tissues are again different because structurally they are different because the cells are different. Functionally they are different because the two types of organisms are leading to different kind of lives. For example, if you look at an animal, now everywhere I am taking the picture of a human being because that is most easy to understand for you. So if you consider any other animal, you will see that the animals move from one place to another. Right? Whereas if you look at the plants, they are always static, they are always fixed at one place, right? So similarly, there are many such differences between a plant, the way an animal prepares his food and the way by which a plant prepares its food. It is quite different, right? So the lifestyle of a plant and an animal is very different and that is why functionally also the tissues are quite different. So let us look at the differences between plant tissues and animal tissues. The first difference, when we talk of plant tissues, mostly they are dead supportive tissues to provide mechanical strength. Okay, so mostly the plant tissues are supportive in function. So that means they support the plant because if you see the Plants are always static at a place, as I just mentioned. They do not move from one place to another. Have you ever seen them moving from one place to another? I'm sure you have not, right? So, so it is fine for the plants if their tissues are dead. But they want these tissues to support them. Because you would have seen that when the plants grow, so they bear so many branches, they bear so many leaves, they bear fruits or flowers. So, so the responsibility of the plant keeps increasing. So it needs a lot of support to hold it, right? So the plants are okay with having dead tissues, but they need tissues to support, to provide it mechanical strength, correct? But whereas in case of animals, mostly it has living tissues. Why? Because the animals keep moving from one place to another, for different activities in search of food in order to work so in order to live the animals keep moving and for locomotion they need lot of more energy like for example you would have seen that when you fall ill you don't have much energy you don't feel like moving from one place to another you just feel like lying down on your bed right so what does that mean that means that if you want to move from one place to another you need more energy now if you need more energy the tissues which constitute you must be living because if the tissues are living, the tissues can provide you energy, right? Because the tissues are made of cells again and the cells are again living. So if they are living cells, the cells have everything in place. It has the nucleus, it has the mitochondria. So the mitochondria is generating energy and you are getting energy, right? So now you can relate things, right? How cells 
provide energy and how that energy is utilized by you when you move from one place to another. So since animals are moving from one place to another, mostly they have living tissues, whereas in case of plants, they need a lot of support and that is why they have dead tissues which act as supportive tissues to provide mechanical strength. Secondly, when we think of plants, the growth is limited to specific regions. So dividing tissues are localized in those regions. Now, when you look at a plant body, it doesn't grow uniformly from everywhere. So, if, if, you, if you look at a plant at your house, <coughs> what do you see? If you look at this picture also, you have planted a small plant like this. Now, you keep giving it water, you let it get proper sunlight, what happens? The plant grows and becomes something like this. Again, the plant grows and it becomes something like this. So if you see, the most of its growth, the maximum growth is shown by the shoot and the root. Right? The root which is growing inside. So this root is growing fast and the shoot is going fast. So the length is growing fast. But if you look at the growth which is shown by the flowers or the leaves or the fruits, it is comparatively lesser. The size of the leaves, leaves and all, it grows. It grows to a certain length and then the growth stops. Similarly, the flowers, the flower, you get a there's a bud, the bud grows into a flower. After that, it, it is not that the flower keeps growing, growing, growing and growing. Right? But when you look at the shoot or the root, it keeps growing, growing and growing. Right? So that means there are certain regions in the plant where the growth is maximum, where the growth is more. So that is why it is said that the growth is limited to specific region in the plant. So those regions where the growth is more, those regions are known as the dividing region of a plant. Whereas the region where the growth is not that prominent, they are known as the non-dividing region of a plant. Right? So, in case of plant, the growth is not uniform in all regions, it is specific to regions. Therefore, in case of plants, the dividing tissues, that means the tissues which have the capability to divide, because only if the tissues divide, the plants can grow. Right? In our previous lesson, we saw that how actually cells grow by cell division. When cells divide, so one cell forms two cells, those two cells will again form four cells, those four cells will again form eight cells. So, I mean, that is how the number of the cells will increase and that is how growth will actually take place. So, the dividing tissues in case of plants, the dividing tissues are localized in those dividing regions. Because wherever the uh, growth is more, there you will have more dividing tissues. Whereas in case of animals, growth is almost uniform throughout. So if you look at a small child who is born, or if you look at a four-year-old kid, and if you look at an adult human being, what do you see? Everything has increased in size. It is not that only the height of the person has increased and his fingers and his hands are still remaining the same. It is not like that, right? So everything has grown uniformly, whether it is your face, whether it is your fingers, whether it is your height, whether it is your weight. So everything has increased uniformly. So the growth is almost uniform everywhere. And that is why you have dividing tissues uniformly distributed accordingly. Right? So, the, here we saw that how plant tissues and animal tissues are structurally di different because of, because of the fact that plants are static and animals are moving. Again, how they are functionally different because the growth is limited in, to certain region in plant, whereas in case of animals, it is almost uniform throughout. Right? So, with this, we saw that how plant tissues and animal tissues are quite different from each other. So children, did you find the video useful? If yes, do not forget to share it with your friends so that they can also benefit out of this video. And I will meet you all very soon with a new video, with a new topic. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.